this is Carol Peters, and we are on location in the beautiful Milius restaurant on the corner of 6th and Monterey, Gilroy, California. And today we're in this historical restaurant because there is so much art here. It's almost like a little museum, besides being a fabulous place to eat. It just recently opened, but the building has been here for many, many years. And it has a floor that was put down in 1922 that's mosaic. And today we're going to actually do a mosaic based on that floor. So let's kind of start, and I'll show you some examples of what we're going to do. First of all, these are small mosaics. And mosaic is just setting stones inside a grout. You can do it that way, or you can put the stones down and then put the grout on top. But I made this box, and this box is just a box that I had, and I glued uh, stones on top. And I got the inspiration from this magazine. This box on the top, um, and these boxes were made by an artist, and they started at $500 and went to $1,500. So <laughs> I made this box for probably $4. Um, these are small mosaic tiles I stuck on a box. The box came from a craft store. It's just a plain brown box. You can buy mosaic uh, pieces like lamps, uh, frames, all kinds of things. So it's really fun to do a mosaic. So I'm going to walk over to my guests. I'm so lucky to have them. They own this beautiful new restaurant. And we are going to have them, they've never done this before, make a mosaic today. Hi. Hello. Glad you are here. OK, my two guests. <laughs> and I'm going to have them introduce themselves, and we'll start with the lady, of course. Ann Zabura, one of the owners of the Amelia's Restaurant. And I'm Adam Sanchez, the other owner of the restaurant. And thank you very much for letting us come. Our pleasure. Okay, so we're going to start, and, I, and basically what we're going to do is we are going to have grout and set the tile. And you can see all those different kinds of tile. We have glass beads, um, square tile. Just about anything that you have around your home can be used for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make stepping stones in the kind you put in the garden so that you'll have that to take home. And they weigh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so when you want to pick them up, they're going to be heavy. And this is kind of a secret. What you start with is basically you'll need a mold. You'll need some grout, which I'll show you here. I have, this is actually a cement. Um, this one is actually a cement block, and that one is a cement block, but you'll need some grout, which is just like powder. And you put the powder in a bucket with some water, and you mix it up, and then you're going to pour it into the pan. We're not going to do that now because it's, we're going to have someone else do it for us. So you take some cooking oil to start with. And you just grease the pan, just like cooking, like mm -hmm. you're making a cake. You grease the pan. In the meantime, you're mixing up your grout. And then the grout will be poured in, and somebody will bring us um, a, your grout. But let me, let's just talk about your designs. First of all, I took my dad's brand, and I actually, after the grout was poured, I branded the brand into the grout. And the way I got this is I put a pattern down that I had cut out like this. And these are the pieces that went on the sides. So I actually worked from a template. So I, I pulled these out and actually set the stones around the outside. So I actually put the stones in the grout. And then when I was finished with that, I pulled it up and I had an empty spot and I branded it. So it's kind of nice to start with some kind of an idea first. I know you worked on a design that you have in mind. Adam, you worked on a design that you have in mind. So I think that you need to have something in your head first. You've pulled out all your colors. You've pulled out all your colors. So that when you start, this sets up really fast. So once you start putting down the tile, you need to know what you're doing. You can't stop and think. And you can't actually try to pull them back up, because then you have a really a mess. So I'm going to put this underneath. Um, so this, I'm just going to move over to here. <clears throat> this was actually done with cement. Uh, I used stamps on this. And when the grout is wet, you can take the stamp and actually stamp it in. 
and pull it out and you have you know, the stamp right into the grout. So that's an, another way to do it. These are just the kind of things that you stick on the bottom of a vase when you're going to put flowers in, stuck it in there. Once you're, <clears throat> you set this overnight, once it's dry, and this is heavy, it actually comes right out and you can just put it in your garden. It's very, very durable. You can put whatever you want in there. And I just took a knife and I carved my name in there. Your kids can do these. Anybody can do them. So that's really, really fun. What's your idea? Well, my idea was basically, since we have a restaurant, it also has a bar attached to it, that we would do something with a martini glass, since we have several specialty cocktails that are served in beautiful martini glasses. And I would do something with a martini glass and make it look like there might be a little olive inside and uh, fill it up that way. Nice. And Adam, what are you going to do today? I am going to try to replicate our logo, um, our brand, which is TMR, stands for the Melius Restaurant, um, and uh, decorate around it, I guess, but basically use that for the base, TMR. So your, your idea is taking this and that. Taking the martini glass and actually embedding it into the grout and filling the back side of it so that uh, everything stays in and doesn't uh, fall on the floor when I place it in the bar somewhere. Yeah, the, the, um, this one that I didn't show you is also cement. And cement weighs a lot. It's very, very heavy. And I just pulled a guitar. Um, off the computer, and I put it down first. And this is the way you do it. You put your pattern down, then you fill everything out, and then you pull it off. And if you really want that subject to stand out, make it a different color. Because if you fill that in with color as well, you're going to have too much color, and you're not going to be able to see your design. So that's just a, a real trick, and I'll just put this aside. Why don't you tell us about the floor while we're waiting for the grout? Well, the floor here in the restaurant is marble. We thought it was tile when we first pulled it up, but it's 100% hand-cut, hand-laid marble. Um, about a third of it was completely floated in cement when we discovered, um, uh, we pulled up a tack strip that was actually nailed into the cement. We pulled it up, and it blew a little hole about a quarter size into there. And through, underneath that hole, we saw some shiny material and we started cleaning it off, chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and it pretty much got us the floor that you see now, which has been uh, here since 1922. It's the original floor. And you said the Japanese actually laid it? Uh, they believe the Chinese, Chinese. That, that came in and helped Chinese. the railroad and things like that. Uh, they believe mm -hmm. they, uh, they were the ones that, were, I don't know for sure, but that's what I've been told. They, mm -hmm. they were probably the craftsmen at the time that did that. It's beautiful. It's very small. And it, it's intricately placed, and you said they actually beveled each piece, so they meshed together. Every and piece is supposed to be uh, well hand cut, and uh, the floor, to get the artistry now and the craftsmanship, the floor has to be perfectly level, and, uh, and then lay individual tiles. Um, we've had guys that say, I don't care how much you pay me, I don't think I'd attempt that these days. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, uh, I went to Las Vegas last week, and I went to the Wynn, mm -hmm. and it's all mosaic, beautiful mosaic floor. I went to the Bellagio, it's all mosaic floor, even their tables. So there's so much opportunity to actually do, you know, mosaic on so many things and it's so easy and so inexpensive, even children can do it. And, and I we have our gloves on because it's kind of messy and you really are going to appreciate having your hands protected. It's kind of rough at this point on here, we poured it in, it's like a cake batter. I'm just going to do this and see how smooth it gets. You're just kind of bringing up um, a smooth surface because any irregularity is going to show. So you see how that just kind of evened it out? Barely pushing down, just pulling that across. So I'm going to do the same thing with yours. And you're not using a pattern now. You're just going for your design straight on here. And then I'll just assist you. Freestyle. Freestyle. <laughs> That's the most fun, actually. <laughs> OK, so you can start in. 
And Anne, we talked about your design. You're going to take that martini I'm glass. Take the martini glass and sink it right in. Let's see how this works. Trudy, do you think we should start in the middle? Yeah. If you're going to put your your uh, the Milius restaurant, okay. the lettering, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just start right in the okay. center. Okay. And so what you do is just start putting in your pieces. And basically, in any kind of art project, you really need to know in your mind what it's going to look like first. It's hard when you just look at it and say, what do I do? Think it out, get prepared, get everything you need out. We have all the tile. We have some water with a sponge, um, You know, lots of paper towels. We have a bucket of water underneath just to slosh off our hands if we need to. <laughs> So you get everything out first, and then you start putting it in. This, the thing I really wanted to do the show here, I'm so thankful that you're, you're allowing us to come in and invade this beautiful, um, pristine place with this messy project. But there is so much um, rich Gilroy history here, and I applaud you for keeping that. Because when you come in the restaurant, you're not only feasting your, your eyes on all the decor, and your stomach from the food, but you're also learning a little bit about Gilroy history. And George Milius was an old time rancher resident, and he owned this building, which was a hotel. So we're in a historical location. He kind of started the Jim Canna, Bonanza days, if you believe it or not, I was on the Bonanza board with George Milius, <laughs> so I actually knew him. Um, and he was a very, very kind, nice man. And uh, we're going to see this picture later. So you guys are working like crazy here. And why did you pick the colors that you picked? Well, our predominant color around here seems to be black mm -hmm. with uh, tan. And then uh, floors have uh, the red and green in, in them. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like an easy fit to keep here. Plus, uh, I tend to like very subdued colors. Awesome. If you have a center um, of interest, say like whatever is in the middle should be brighter, should be a focal point. It's just like any design that you're doing with uh, say a painting or any art project. You should have one area where the viewer looks. And in this case, it's going to be the martini glass. And in your case, it will be these beautiful um, stones that are actually um, you know, just decorative stones you can use. I bought these, they weren't even for mosaic, but they're pretty. And that's a brighter color, and that's also right down the middle. The eye will go right to Adam's TMR. Kind of like when we design our uh, plate presentation with our food here. Uh -huh. We always have the main dish stand out a little bit and everything's plated around it. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take very long. If the trick is to have all of your supplies out and then it's ready to rock and roll. It's probably like cooking. If you prep it all, you can cook in a minute. If you have to stop and chop, if you have to stop and you know, right. do whatever you need to do, it takes forever. What makes uh, Mosaic so um, appealing to people, like I said, it's in the hotels, it's in a lot of the real high-end areas, is because of the texture. Most of the things we see now, especially with the advent of all the digital graphic design. It's all slick and flat. But something to be said about actually feeling it, the roughness and texture, it just means that the surface is rough. And I think that has that nice tactile appeal to it. And it really goes well in the restaurant because it, it has a nice, oh, I don't know, just comfortable, um, earthy feel to it. That looks great. So you done? I think so. All right, you want to, we'll flip it around so you can show the camera. And oh, don't pick it up. Yeah. I, I put it on cardboard. Another thing is, is make sure that your surface, you don't want to move this for like, I don't know, overnight. So we put it on cardboard so you could actually lift it like a tray. And then that way you're not picking up these floppy, you right. know. So that looks really good. And how are you doing, Anne? I think I'm doing okay. All right, so we'll just turn it around. 
Makes me want to open the bar right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's early in the morning, but <laughs> you have a beautiful bar. And then we'll be able to clean the glass up. Yeah, actually, it comes off your clothes. It's pretty, Good. pretty washable. You know, so very nice, very very nice job but today. We're going to take my dad's brand and we're going to stamp it in a piece of wood here. So I'll have his brand on your on wall display. And on display. Yeah. So we're very, very excited about that. Normally, the cowboys are on the range heating up the brands, but now we're actually on a... On the range. On the range, in the <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> so tell me what to do and we'll go for it. Okay, so being that it's a flat surface and not this a is... cow, <laughs> that uh, you're going to have one shot at not moving it around because the, uh, the the board is going to catch on fire when you do it. Uh, <laughs> don't get don't get excited. We got a wet rag right here. When you're done, we'll throw it on there and it'll okay. stop the burning process because it'll keep going and it won't have all the definition of the regular brand. Okay. So, so you ready? I think so. You get one shot. Okay, one shot. It has to be a good one. So here, go ahead okay. and hold it. Okay. Hold it and just drop it straight where you want all it. All right. Keep going. Go ahead. Now brand it. Yeah. Then just push. Oh my God. Now keep it on there, keep it on there. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. I see fire, I smell smoke. Okay, raise it up just a little bit and let's look at it. Oh, Perfect, yay, look at that. Yay, yay, All right, that came yes, out good. Yes, that's awesome. Oh my <laughs> God, I'm so excited. Yeah, that, that like came out really good. really neat. Okay, let me cover it up to stop the burning on here. All right. Which, again, you don't normally do on cattle. No. That's awesome, Adam. Thank you very, very much. Look at that. Yeah, very nice. Now, is that black gonna stay there? Oh yeah, it'll stay there. Mm -hmm. Just like this, yeah, this is stay permanent uh -huh. like that. Very nice. And this very is nice. Russell's. Russell, Russell Wolf's, yes. Yes, yeah. Russell and Terry's brand. So yeah. that's great. I know my dad made that brand, so that works out perfect. Perfect, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna talk about the art in the Milius restaurant, and this piece really blew my mind. You have to talk about it and tell them all the whole story, Adam. Yeah. Well, the story starts back um, when uh, uh, George Emilius was the big uh, promoter of the Gary Gymkhana, which was the uh, rodeo down here. And um, he, uh, I don't know if he actually started the Gymkhana or uh, I'm not sure, but, but obviously the big promoter of it, mayor of Gilroy at the time and things. So he, there was a rider that I guess all the rodeo guys used to stay here in the hotel, uh, eat and drink here, go ride in the rodeo, and then at the end they'd all check out. Well, this one fellow got hurt real bad, had to go to the hospital, and um, of course couldn't ride in the rodeo. That was his income at the time. He didn't have uh, the money now to pay his hospital bill, or he told George, I'm sorry, I really can't even pay my hotel bill. I'm not sure what to do. So George, being the good guy that he was and the promoter of the rodeo, said, you know what, let's just forget the bill for the hotel and the food. He went down, he actually went down to the hospital, paid his hospital bill for him and just said, just get better. We want you to support you guys, come back uh, and hopefully you can ride again next year. So, nice. yeah, very nice. So in appreciation, not only did he pay him back, uh, but he hand carved uh, stagecoach, horses, riders, um, there's actually two people inside the stagecoach. Um, the drivers of the stagecoach actually have silk scarves that are tied on them. Uh, the hats are, I mean, everything is completely hand carved. And the detail of it, uh, the wheels uh, are actually wrapped in steel uh, or metal. Uh, all the harnesses and the horses have little uh, um, uh, brass bands that are around them. In the, Supposedly the scale is so exact, it's, it's crazy, I guess, how, how perfect it is for doing hand carving and someone said almost with a buck knife. So, I mean, it's, oh uh, my gosh. yeah, even the brakes next to the driver, there's a little pole which is actually on the real stagecoach as you push it and the brakes actually run against the wheels and everything. So very, very detailed. And, um, and what was his so, name? What was well, what we did was um, actually I brought the board down and we were starting to clean it and um, saw this brown kind of a dark black spot on it and she started rubbing the board right there and through the board came his signature engraved into the board itself and the the smaller one in the back says uh, 1948 the front one says 1950 and his name was Gene Hoback so we decided hey let's let's google that and let's see if we can find that story somewhere 
um, and we'll put it up next to it. And lo and behold, Gene Hoback, I, I believe, went on to become this great Americana artist of these sculptures, Western sculptures. And uh, we found that he actually has a piece uh, very similar to this in the American Smithsonian Institute. And uh, I mean, it just completely blew us away when we said, wow, we got a piece of the Smithsonian in the, in the Melius restaurant. And you don't even have to leave Gilroy. Another very interesting aspect of this restaurant is that you actually were creative enough to use um, parts of a building that was right next door. So, and they became your lights. Yes. So why don't you tell us about the uh, lighting fixtures in here? Well, the lighting fixtures, um, people keep telling us that they would love to have windows back in this building and they filled them years ago because of earthquake retrofit. Mm -hmm. So there's just these kind of blocks on the wall and they've had paintings and posters and things like that. And um, so we went outside one day, there's this very talented artist here in Gilroy that she paints old windows mm -hmm. and um, we saw this one window exposed in the Halls building next door and uh, we thought of um, asking the owner if we could have that and she could paint something nice on it for us and we can display it somehow and then um, come to find out our same contractor Frank Vasquez is redoing that building he says well all the original windows are still in the building there's only one exposed the rest mm -hmm. are all covered up and so Ann says you know what it'd be great if we could get three of them, backlight them, put them on the wall, and use them as an art piece, um, which has just turned out really spectacular. We're standing in front of a very, very special um, block, and Adam, why don't you tell us about the brands on this block? Of well, the GM right here, um, even though I come from the car business, doesn't stand for General Motors. <laughs> this is the original George Melius brand, um, and this one next to it, the Sideways DS, is uh, Don Salachi. Uh, who is married to Carol Melius still, and they still live on the Melius Ranch up here in Gilroy. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, it was very nice to get this, that and brand. This brand is also on a board that I have on the table in my studio. My dad made this brand, mm. so I Did know it? that oh, for nice. sure. Yeah, nice. so that's really connected. Gilroy is always connected. Yeah. All right, now we're standing in front of a s historical map that's on the wall, and so as you dine, you can look at this, and it is hand drawn on canvas, and it's a real find because it's the city of Gilroy. So, Adam, why don't you talk about the map? Yeah, thanks. Uh, a friend of ours, uh, Vince Costello, local resident for a long, long time, uh, gave us this map uh, with the promise of uh, you can have it if you put it on display for us. So, um, so Vince gave us this map. I'm not sure how long he's had it or where he got it from, but it it uh, appears to be a hand drawn on canvas old surveyor's map, um, and uh, as you'll see it. Stops at First Street. Uh, there's just lots that are not built yet. Stops at Hannah. Stops at 10th Street and uh, about Chestnut. And so it's just a real small core of Gilroy. We don't have a date on it yet. We're trying to get the Historical Society to come start matching up some of the places. But even the alley behind the, the Amelia's here doesn't even go through yet. And uh, one of the nice things we're going to do is try to get a wax pencil mm -hmm. and so many people have come by and said this was my grandfather and where he oh. lived in this lot here and mm -hmm. so we're going to maybe write their names on the nice. on the actual glass and the slough went right through the middle of monterey street and there is a bridge crossing over the slough still mm -hmm. and, uh, so they yeah. probably can document the the year from yeah, what they, was here in gilroy right, right so it's a it's a wonderful wonderful thing to see now we're standing in front of a photo of the old theater in Gilroy, the Strand Theater. And I am very familiar with the, one of the owners, uh, Jack Peters, who most of you know, has, uh, was owner of the Strand for many, many years. And he's currently my husband, but <laughs> we're all sorry it went away because it was such a great place. Yeah, so. it was, it was. We ended up getting this photo out of the Gilroy Museum. Um, and uh, I forget the exact date, but I looked it up. Uh, this is Cary Grant, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. in Gunga Din, and I think it was 1931 when that was released. Wow. So that picture is from 1931. Um, but we were so lucky to find um, the original projector from the Strand Theater, uh, and we have it here on display, and it's encased. Um, but uh, it actually still works the day before we bought it. The auctioneer had uh, actually watched a film on it. So it actually still works. Everything's in working condition. And uh, uh, it was just a great, great piece to find. 
and uh, we thought we have to tie it into Gilroy. We have to tie it into the restaurant. So we have it on display next to the old picture of the Strand Theater. And you know what I was just thinking is that when you come here um, and you're, say, dining, you don't have to think about what you're going to talk about. I mean, talk about, you know, dinner conversation. It's yeah. all around you, and people have wonderful memories. So yeah. thank you very much. Now I think we're going to move over to the bar. Well, I just want to thank both uh, Adam and Ann for letting us come today and make our mosaics based on the beautiful floor. And um, we're so fortunate to have this wonderful restaurant in our, in our town. And I'm standing next to someone that really looks familiar. Yeah. You know, who is that? <laughs> John Wayne, the Duke. The Duke uh, spent uh, many, and, many a days here, I guess. Uh, said that was one of his uh, favorite places to have a steak. And uh, used to buy a lot of cattle here in town, and that's, uh, I guess uh, that was his connection here. Mm -hmm. And I also remember my father coming down and going back home and telling me that he had a drink with John Wayne. So um, it's kind of like he belongs in here, too. <laughs> yeah. So let's take a look at your mosaics and, and uh, just how do you feel about them? I like them. I think, uh, one, it was very relaxing and uh, was fun to do. Yeah, it was. I think uh, when it comes, when it dries, I, uh, I think they look great. They look great now. They look great now, and I think you did a wonderful job. And it is relaxing. It's fun. It's creative. It's doing something that no one else has in this whole wide world, and it's very, very personal. So I think that's that's one of the one things you can say about art and artwork. And then I have my brand, <laughs> which is a bonus. <laughs> so I think. Everything today was, was great and enjoyed very much being here. And I just want to thank Adam and Ann for allowing us to come in and uh, invade your, your space. And also I want to thank the Gavilan crew. The amazing Gavilan crew, as always, did a fabulous job. So what we're going to say right now is ciao for now all together. So thank you very much and ciao, ciao for, for now. now.